Alright, today we're going to be talking about padding oracles. Now a padding oracle is a program that sits sits inside a decryption algorithm and essentially tells you whether or not the padding is correct. And the vulnerability we're going to be talking about takes advantage of this feature to disclose information that you're not supposed to know. Now these kind of attacks are actually quite common. Recently they were even used on uh, Steam, the the gaming store. So to understand this attack, we have to talk about blockchaining. Now, simple blockchaining is incredibly simple. You just divide up plain text into the same size blocks and encrypt them one by one. Very simple. Cipher blockchaining is a little bit more complicated and supposedly more secure. Instead of just encrypting every block, you XOR the block with the previous block of cipher text. And you XOR the first piece of plain text with an initialization vector. To decrypt, you simply run it backwards, you decrypt the ciphertext, and then XOR it with the previous piece of ciphertext. So these are the formulas to describe the encryption and decryption for cipher block chaining, and these are going to be very important when we're trying to take advantage of the padding oracle. Alright, so padding refers to a little extra added on to the end of a block. Now you could pad something for a variety of reasons. For example, if your blocks are size 8 and you have a word that's only size 6, then you have to add a little bit extra. And a standard pattern procedure uses the PKC S7 uh, standard, where n bytes of value n are added. So in this case, 3 bytes of value 3 are added. If you had to pad 2, it would be 2 bytes of value 2, so on and so forth. Now, a padding oracle is simply a program will, that will tell you if the padding on your blocks is correct, and if it is correct, it will return 1. So, in this instance, the padding is not correct. In this instance, the padding is correct, and the padding oracle will tell you that. <laughs> and that's actually why this attack is so valuable, because we can break encryption with very limited information. All we need is access to a message encrypted using cipher block chaining and access to the padding oracle. And we could even get that using a side attack by detecting the amount of time it takes for the padding oracle to tell us whether or not the padding is correct. So this is the algorithm that is used to break encryption with the padding oracle. This is from Vardane. He's the first guy to write about this in 2002. And uh, we're going to go through this algorithm and explain how it works. <clears throat> so, to perform this algorithm, you start by selecting two random strings. In this case, we're going to use two blocks. You run that through CBC to get C prime, and then you concatenate that with the text you're trying to decrypt, in this case, CN. And P prime de denotes the plain text decryption of our string. And th the reason we're able to break this is because of the way that CBC works. So, recall these earlier mathematical definitions, what we have right here. I mean, this will allow us to get a definition of p prime two that will isolate p n. So you know, we simple we'll simplify this decrypt encrypt, and we get this definition of p prime of the p prime two. Now this is actually incredibly helpful to us because we know what c prime is, we know what c of n minus one is, p of n is what we're looking for, and we can figure out p prime of two using the padding oracle. We just need p prime of two, and then we can break the plain text without breaking the encryption. Here's how the padding oracle will help us get p prime of 2. We can't get the whole thing at once, but we can get it piece by piece. p prime of 2 is an entire block, so we're going to start by getting the last character of that block, p prime of 2 k. Essentially what we're going to do is find a c prime of k that returns a valid padding, and we'll know if it's a valid padding when the padding oracle tells us we're correct. So we're going to iter iterate through all 256 possible last values for C prime, and uh, eventually the padding oracle will return one. And when the padding oracle returns one, we know that we found a valid padding. Because we found a valid padding, we know that P prime of K is equal to OX01 because of the standard padding procedure. So once we have this information, we can use this formula to solve for the last uh, character of the plain text block. <clears throat> so here's what the math looks like. Uh, the last character of the plain text block, you know, this is a very simple formula. We only have one unknown. We plug it in, we do the math, and it's hacked. We've broken this encryption with no knowledge of strings, nothing, you know, no knowledge of how the encryption was 
created, it's all using this padding oracle. And that's why this is so powerful, because we just bypassed all those fancy algorithms just using this little oracle. Now, it's not complete. We only have the last character of uh, the block we're trying to decrypt. But using the last character, we can take further advantage of the padding oracle to get all the rest of the characters. So now we're looking for a block that ends in two twos, which is also valid padding from the padding oracle. We know the last, we know the C prime K that's necessary for that because we know P N K and we can use this formula to find the C prime K to put here. Once we have that last C prime K, then we just have to do the same iteration process for the second to last C prime K. Eventually the padding oracle will return one, we'll have another solvable equation. And then we repeat this process down the line for P, P of N K minus two, P of N K minus three, until we have one whole block. Once we have one whole block, we can decrypt the entire message. Unfortunately, we can't always decrypt the first block because of the initialization vector. <coughs> now the thing to take away from this is that even professional cryptography has vulnerabilities. It's not enough to just trust the fact that a professional made it. There are way other ways to get in. All right, so this is going to be a demo showcasing some of the algorithms and math behind the exploit that we just talked about. So we're going to be using a lot of the tools written in Ruby by Ron Bose as part of his series on this exploit. Uh, and right here I have my remote test server. So it only has two functions. It can encrypt a text string and it has the ability to not decrypt one, but it has a padding oracle that, that can tell you if your padding is correct or not. So those are the only two things we really need. So I'm going to start off here with a random text string and uh, we're going to save that. We're going to start up our server. And we're going to run a quick demo. That should uh, showcase the ability of sort of automated, you know, uh, programs to use this exploit. So we're not going to use this most, mostly. We're going to do it ourselves. But this is just to show how quickly, really, um, the Cypher blockchain inc can can be exploited. So here you go, decrypted, just like we wanted. So let's try a slightly different string. Hello to CS453. Let's restart our server to load the new text string. And let's get our string. So here we have the encrypted string. We're going to paste this in here for safekeeping. And we're also going to get it in this format for future use, which should be really nice. All right. Now we have it broken up into two blocks of eight characters each as well. Um, we talked about why that is a little bit earlier. So now we are going to do what we talked about earlier and take this character and instead replace all these characters with zero and then try a bunch of different characters, zero through 256 in here and see which one of them gives us a success and properly XORs with the other block of the cipher. So we can just write a Ruby script for this. It shouldn't be too tough and we have a lot of help with another one of the tools written by Ron. So it is nice that it's very easy to um, to brute force this because it's only 256 characters. That's very very little obviously. So here is where we're going to Add it. We've got our seven zeros, our variable character, and then here we are going to add the just the second half of characters from our cipher, of our cipher text. And for each one, we're going to test whether or not the padding oracle gives us a success. So we're going to be hunting for that one true out of here. Yeah, there it is. Alrighty. So it looks like 62. So let's store that here. That's very important. So that's going to be hex. And then we also have this one, 61. So that's the eighth character from, from our original ciphertext, block one. So we're going to take both of these and we're going to convert them to binary.
little hard to do in my head, but um, I'm sure there are people who can, and they should be very proud. Zero, 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 one, zero. All right, so that's two. So we got a value of two, which is exactly what we expected because, as we saw before, hello to CS 453, 155, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so that has 14. So obviously there's going to be two left. So we would expect it to. We would expect two two values at the end of our um, to make up our padding at the end of our string. So that's exactly what we wanted. And just to prove that it is not a one-off thing, uh, we have a second, just quick example here that we've already done, this time with, uh, with two letters that we've solved for. Um, again, obviously the first things you're going to solve for are always going to be the padding, so it's going to take a while before you go through the padding and actually start to get to the message, but it is pretty clear that, you know, it is finding the correct uh, plain text sequence. So I guess just one last thing to note, um, if you're looking for these sorts of bugs in the wild, uh, a really common tool that's used is uh, the Perl script Pad Buster, written by Brian Hollyfield. Um, if you do um, sort of want to use this in the wild, what you want to do is you want to look for um, you know vulnerable scripts in ASP.NET, um, and sort of the end goal is usually to get um, there, there are many possibilities, but one example would be to look for a, uh, an unencrypted web config file because there's usually a lot of useful information there for, for hacking websites and exploiting vulnerabilities. So we hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening.